Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really happy to introduce you to today's guest, Heather Podeska. Heather has more than 30 years of professional professional performance experience on stage as an operatic soprano, as a national speaker, and as the host of the popular podcast and television show, Thrive. She combines her unique performance skills with her expertise as a personal brand strategist, image consultant, and business coach to teach driven entrepreneurs how to become highly profitable dynamic presenters, and how to rise to celebrity status. Welcome, Heather. Thank you so much for having me, Tammy. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited, too, because of all the people I've ever met in the coaching field, Heather, you have experiences that, what, maybe half of a percentage point of all people have because you have actually been a star on the stage and you're able to bring all of that knowledge and talent to to help people like me who need to know how to present themselves on stage so that we can make a big impact. So I'd really like you to tell me a little bit about your background and how you shifted that operatic background to what you're doing today uh, with your coaching programs. Yeah, absolutely. So actually, my story isn't all jazz hands and glitter. <laughs> uh, you know, I I was singing for a long time. I trained as an operatic soprano. I went to New England Conservatory. I spent a lot of money, time, energy, heart, soul, sweat, tears, and blood trying to become Um, a professional operatic soprano and my dream was to be at the Metropolitan Opera and I worked very 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 hard at my craft and what happened for me was I developed a lot of body tension because I was so competitive and I really really wanted this and I worked so so hard that the harder I worked the more tight I got my body got very tight and it really impacted my technique and my ability to have the kind of career that I wanted but I did get things because I worked hard and I had the, some talent and I knew people who believed in me. So I got one of my jobs was I was hired by the Boston Lyric Opera to sing with the professional chorus and to do some tours for them. And I remember very clearly sitting on the stage for a production of Magic Flute. And I'd been in the chorus for one, two, three, four, five years. And thought that that door opening was going to lead to something much bigger. And five years later, I'm sitting on the stage of the Schubert Theater. The house is full, 1,500 people. The orchestra is playing. And I'm sitting with my back to the audience. And the soprano, the lead soprano, is standing smack dab in front of me, singing over the top of my head. And I had this total come to Jesus moment where I was like, what the hell am I doing here? This is torture. I'm physically sitting with my back to the audience, watching someone else live my dream. And at that point, I knew it was time for me to make a change. I'd I'd gone for it 120%. I'd poured everything into it that I had, and it didn't work out. My dream didn't come true. And I knew that I didn't want to spend the rest of my life feeling like a failure. But I had no idea what the next step was going to be for me because my whole life had been about singing and performing and stagecraft and languages and how to make a perfect aval. So I went to a career counselor. We did a lot of assessments and came up with image consulting because I'd always been very good at putting images together and helping other singers when they would prepare for auditions. And I got trained as a certified image consultant and started doing that. And as I did it, I, I loved it, but there was something else sort of pulling me and I wasn't sure what that was but I knew that there was something else I wanted to do or or try or 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 follow so I went back to the career counselor and I said I think I want to be in business and she said Heather you have no business experience and I said I know but I just 
I feel like I want to be in marketing because I think I can help people. So she told me about personal branding. And when she told it to me, it was like, you know, the heavens opened up and God called out, Heather, this is for you. <laughs> because every criteria that she mentioned was like checking a box for me. It's helping people find their authentic voice. Check. And I've been doing that my whole life. I've been like refining and finding my authentic sound my whole life. I know how to do that. Helping people tell their story. Well, that's what opera is. It's getting on stage and telling a story. Helping people connect with their audience and look the part that they're playing. So it was all of these parallel things that I'd already been doing as a singer, but just translated into a different way to help people in their businesses. So I knew that I'd found that next step for myself to really follow a path that was in alignment with a deeper calling because really singing and art and life in general is a calling to help you tap into who you are at a deeper level. And we all have different channels for following that path. And for me, that, that first path was through singing. And because my intention around singing when I was doing it when I was younger was to be famous and to be in the spotlight and to be at the Met and to have people love me and applaud for me. I put so much pressure on those two little tiny folds in my throat that my body was rejecting the intention. It was saying, we can't do it like this, Heather. So what was so cool was when I started personal branding and I really started helping people find their voice and really articulate their intentions for being of service in the world, I started to tap into my own authentic voice in a way that I hadn't done before when I was singing. And my singing voice, my body, my tension all started to relax. And I started to have access to my singing voice in a way that I never had before. And now when I sing, it's, you know, I have to still pay attention to the technique. I still have to, like, pay attention to spreading my back muscles open and grounding myself and spinning my breath and all of those things. But I feel much more open as a channel to just express and to be artistic and to connect and to move people to places to transport them emotionally and spiritually to a different place, which is, I'm going to tear up talking about it because it's such a, such a gift to me to be able to do that. And that's how I got to where I am now. And it's what I love about doing what I do in my business because it's the same thing, whether I'm helping somebody figure out the title to their book, how to talk about their business, how to figure out what they want to do with their business, or whether they're on stage and they're trying to give a presentation. It's all about connecting to that authentic power voice that's, that's special to them and helping them to really get that out in a way that stays connected to that deeper core. So that's how I got here. <laughs> well, as you were speaking, I actually had chills because <laughs> I, I think you really, the, the big point in your story is you were trying so hard for all the wrong reasons. You wanted fame. You wanted the audience to love you. You, you, you were doing it for the, for kind of an ego driven reason. But when you stopped and started doing it for the love reason of service, it's, it's as if everything just opened up. And here, and it was like handed to you on a silver platter. Here you are, Heather. Now you not only can help yourself to sing that power voice or that power song, but your, your gift to the world is to help others. And then it was like everything just opened up. And you were so persistent. And I think that's really important too, is that you did have that quality of persistence until you were given the gift of knowing who you were. Mm -hmm. But, and I can honestly tell everyone who's listening, I had the, the gift of being able to brainstorm with Heather. And when she talks about helping people with titles of their books and 
titles of their presentations. She is like a superstar. It just pours out of her, I mean, really snappy, really excellent headlines. So write a little note to yourself that if you ever need help with coming up with really good taglines, book titles, ask Heather because she really is good. So you now are helping people with with their personal branding. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you do that? Where do you start people? Because I, I, I see myself, for example, I'm kind of, I think I'm a diamond in the rough. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're a diamond in the diamond. You're a shiny diamond already. But, but, but when you talk about the image, I, I go, yeah, I, I check. I need help with that. You, you talk about how to tell your story. Check. I need help with that. Uh, because, I, you know, we all, no matter um, how long we've been around, we may think that we're like at the top of our game, but I think that we all can use additional help. And when I met you, it made me really realize that, wow, if, if Heather can help me with one simple thing, like a, like a phrase or a tagline, think about how she could help me craft the story. And if you listened to how Heather told her story, if you were like me, you had a, a physical reaction. I had the hair on my arm stood up. I started to tear up. And of course, I could relate to her story very, very well. So she actually demonstrated to us part of how to tell a good story because we were there, you know, I could see you with your back to the audience and I could see that opera singer in front of you and you looking at her saying, you're living my dream, you know, and I was just like, oh my God. So that's really interesting. So let's talk about where would you start to help somebody to figure out all these things? Well, I think it's a great question because that's the question most people come with is how do I start? How do I figure this out? And, you know, for adults, for people who have been around the sun a few times, we have a myriad of experiences of talents that we've developed, different aspects of our personalities, and sometimes our values have even shifted over time. And, and you have to look at, at those deeper levels and really look at and take the time and I think that that's something that people don't want to do and it's the gift I think it's one of the big gifts of branding is giving yourself the time and the space to actually marinate in yourself like <laughs> what it is that you want because if you do if you hit the road marketing if you're out there pounding the pavement and you don't have this deeper level this deeper layer figured out at some point you're going to hit the wall you just are you're going to be like now what and when you take the time to do that and you really look at why am i here what is it i mean one of the questions you can ask yourself is what do i really want and it's simple, but, you know, and then, so that's the first question. See, I get really passionate about it because I, it, people don't go there. What do I really, really want? And then this follow-up question is why do I really want that? And that why question is connected to your story. And a lot of times people dismiss their story or they don't understand how their story um is impacting their business now even if it's not a direct relationship to you know I'm a I was a singer now I'm a brand strategist it you could be a banker and have had an experience when you were younger or growing up that really influences how you do your work now and your mission in that role now and understanding that connection is huge because that's who you are and especially as coaches consultants um, solopreneurs, individual professionals, you are your brand. And, you know, I'm going to go a little deep here, but why are you here? You know, if you want to be in business and you really want to serve people, 
you have a mission and figuring that out not only serves the people you're trying to serve, but it is deeply fulfilling for you to do that. So I hope that answers the question of where to oh, start. It really answers the question because when you stop and ask, what do I want? And then why? For me, for example, I really, really love helping people get found online and to get media. And I look back at my entire life, way back in the third grade, I got my scribe badge in Girl Scouts. And I was so proud of that. And I did the Girl Scout news for the Corvallis Gazette Times. That was the start of my media journey. And my entire life was spent trying to figure out how to write for newspapers, how to be a TV producer. I had TV shows and everything brought me to, to now where I'm, I'm interviewing cool people like you because I love helping people get their message out because just in the few minutes that we've talked already, I think that your message could have already changed a life mm -hmm. because if you think about it, if somebody just stops and says, what do I really want? Why do I want that? Right. Boom. <laughs> it's like those two things are life changing questions and answers. So I think that's really, really cool. You also are a popular show host with Thrive. Can you tell me what Thrive is all about? Yeah, Thrive is my podcast where the mission of the show is to bring people, tips, and resources to help people um, create their own abundant life and business. And it's been such a thrill to have the show because I really try to bring people on who have a message. Sometimes it's their story, but also real tactical things as well. We've had people on who've talked about how to do video storytelling. I just had um, a Hollywood makeup artist on who had done makeup for Al Gore and Shirley Temple. And you know, you were just talking about image and image is a part of your brand. And um, it's not something to be afraid of. Again, I always go back to expression. It's not about showing up as, you know, Chanel. It's about expressing who you are and having fun with that. So I try to bring on guests that have interesting stories, who are doing interesting things, and also have um, real valuable content to share so that people can take that away from the show and apply it and, and really take that business and that brand to the next level. So Thrive is not only a podcast, but it's a, it actually is very unique. Well, and I'll give an example. Business Innovators is, is typically a, an audio podcast. Thrive is actually a video podcast, which really, if you look at the podcasting online show world, there are not that many video podcasts. So you are like in the top percentage of unique shows and you actually do do your show in a studio also and you have guests come in sometimes or you have them come over what uh zoom or skype yeah so i'm really lucky i have a fabulous local um tv cable show uh, station and they shoot the show for me in a complete television studio it's awesome we have a crew they have a soundboard it looks great they've been so supportive to me and it really, you know, feeds that beast in me, that my performer beast that I like to be, in, you know, I, I have all this experience performing, so it's fun for me to be on camera in front of the camera. Like you, I mean, you're such a pro at it as well. So um, that's been really fun to have that. So people who are local or who are, you know, I have a guest that's flying in from, I think, Delaware next week to be, on, to be in Boston and be on the show, which is nice because then they get that experience as well. But sometimes if people are, you know, in different countries or whatever and I'm interviewing them, then of course we do, you know, and we're doing this, you're in Florida, I'm in Boston, mm -hmm. but I want to get you to Boston so that you can come on the show. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that, Heather, because I was actually looking at flights and things to Boston because I've never been to the Northeast. Oh, come my, on, baby, my, <laughs> come on. <laughs> my daughter actually um, almost got a job in Boston and she went up there and traveled around. She was very attracted to that part of the world, but then she ended up 
going to Minnesota and she lives in the middle of nowhere now. But um, it, it's funny because she met, you know, the man of her dreams in Minnesota. So I guess she go where where you have to go. It's always but, the guy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but again, your show, and, and I really admire that because that does set you apart with everything you do. Everything you do is at a higher professional level. So someone like me who is, I'm good at what I do. I'm phenomenal at what I do. But think about with the training that you could provide, like, like say, you say, okay, Tammy, we're going to help you with your clothes. We're going to help you with your makeup. We're going to help you with your facial expressions, with the way you present yourself, the way you tell your story to give you that power voice. Think about how I could escalate my personal status and it would it would just help me to grow my business uh, because if I'm able to tell my story in a in a really powerful way, the way you told your story that evoked all that emotion in me, where I could see you, I could see you on stage, I could see everything going on as you told that story i was right there it, it was like i was watching a television show and i could see you and i could put myself into you know obviously being on the stage as an operatic soprano number one i can't even carry a tune so i can't relate to that but i certainly can relate to a time and when I was so terrified to speak to an audience of a couple people, let alone thousands of people, where practicing in the mirror, my voice quavered and my hand shook and my teeth rattled. <laughs> I was so terrified. And now, of course, I, t I got over that. But I, how I did it was with Toastmasters because they force you to get up in front of people and you start practicing. And then pretty soon you're, you're not afraid because you're in a friendly environment. But you actually, um, you have different trainings that are both in person and uh, online. Can you tell me about some of the trainings that people could participate in with you? Absolutely. So the one that I'm, you were talking about, about practice, it's, you're absolutely right. I always say that confidence is physical. It's not confidence until it's in your body. You can think some, just like you said, you could rehearse your talk over and over in your head, but as soon as it starts to come out of your mouth, your teeth start to shake, your legs start <laughs> to shake. Confidence is physical and that comes from practice. So one of the things that I offer is a stage ready master class where people come and we get them up in front of the audience, up and down and up and down. So by the time they're done, they've been on stage or they've been in front of the group several times and they get feedback from me on their performance, but also all the things that go into a powerful presentation, their expert authority positioning, their story. Um, if they're a business person, for sure, how they're hooking me to want to buy whatever it is that they're offering, even if it's something for free, you know, a free, a free strategy session. So when I'm working with someone which is a little bit different than Toastmasters, it's for right. a specific goal of helping them become more profitable, as well, powerful and profitable. And, and again, like Toastmasters, I do it in small groups so that everybody is there in the same boat. Um, supporting each other, but they're all entrepreneurs who are trying to grow their businesses. So the feedback, the feedback that you get is also from a, um, a professional point of view of people trying to help you become more profitable. So they're, they're listening to you uh, not only for your story, but for ways that you could become more effective in your selling. So that's, that's the Stage Ready Masterclass, and I do that a few times during the year. And then the other, there are two other things. One is the um, online program that I have called Close Any Room. And that's a six-week online course that teaches people how to craft their signature talk so that it is profitable. So it goes through everything from how to um, choose which talk to use, which, what you should be talking about in relationship to your business, 
not just, you know, random, but something that's going to help you make more money, to how to structure your content so that you give value when you're speaking, so you're not just showing up asking for something, but you're giving value, but not giving so much content that people don't want to then follow up and buy something from you. So giving content, but without giving away the farm. It also covers how to structure your talk and how to seed your talk so that you're massaging your audience to be open to your offer. It goes over how to give your offer, so how to actually do the sale, how to talk to people about what your offer is. And then the last part of it is how to get speaking gigs and how to put your presentation materials together so people see you as a speaker that they want to book. And that program also has a live Facebook group that I go in and if you have a video and you want feedback on your video, it's not a, like a weekly coaching program, but it is a chance to get questions answered and to get feedback from other people who are in the group as well. So that's that, that's that online program. Close and, any room. Yep, yeah, close any room. And then the other thing that's coming up, which is really exciting, is that uh, with my colleague, Tina Brinkley-Potts, we are launching a America's Hottest Speaker Competition. And it's in conjunction with a women's conference called She Runs the World. So we'll be teaching online strategies, how to make more money online, how to, that piece that we were talking about before, like how do you really find what your vision is for your business? And I'm going to be talking about how to create a star brand so that people see you as the expert. And then we're going to have a live speaking competition. So if you're someone who wants to be on stage and who wants to get some credibility and some exposure and also some feedback, this might be a really great opportunity. And that's launching in the next couple of weeks. We're going to be in Atlanta, in Boston, uh, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Miami, and I think Raleigh, North Carolina. So it's going to be a really awesome, fun tour. So if you are interested in speaking, getting feedback, getting exposure, or just coming to a group of really awesome, highly driven women, we'd love to have you. And if you, that, that you can find, um, there's a Facebook group, a page for, for that. She runs the world and there's information about that there. Okay. She runs the world. And right now, um, and I will put this in our show notes, I'll put the live links in so that if someone is interested, they can go find out how to get tickets to those events or how to sign up to be part of that speaker's competition. Because um, what, if I understand it correctly, the speaker's competition is limited. Is, is it only um, 10 people per city? Is that yes, correct? Only 10, only 10 people per city, per city. And the cool thing about this competition is there's, it's going to be a social media vote, like oh. American Idol. So you can have the chance to have literally like 10,000 people see you um, see the replay of your talk and then have them vote for you. So there's going to be a winner in each city for the live performance, but then there's also going to be a social media winner. So you're going to be able to drive lots of traffic to your talk. It's going to be really cool. Really yeah. excited about that. That is really cool. And, and I've been following and I have been sharing um, the She Runs the World information and that because I, I really think that it is important that if you are interested in being a speaker on the stage, uh, even having a show like like the Business Innovators or Thrive or being a guest on these shows, every little thing you do is going to take you one step closer to your overall goal that when you ask your question, the what do I really, really want and the why do I want it? And if you're excited about being on stage and speaking on stage because you see the vision of how it can improve your, your business or maybe you just have this message that you need to get out there. So many people, they have a message and and I know it's happened to me where people along the way, it was kind of almost like, be quiet, Tammy. <laughs> and But the cool thing about what you offer, Heather, is you offer people like me who know they've got a message, who know that they're a diamond. Like, like I said, I was a diamond in the rough. And you said, no, Tammy, you're a diamond, <laughs> you right. know, already. But I just need that confidence, like what you said, that physical, internal confidence that radiates where when you walk into a room, people go, whoa, <laughs> because your energy is just so powerful. 
And I think the training that you help people with, with, with helping them with their image, helping them with their personal brand, helping them with the, the business. I don't know if you realize, Heather, the combination that you bring to the table as a performing artist, an image consultant, mixed with business. That is such a cool combination and it's very rare. And as you know, there's the old thing about the starving artist. And you've mm. heard that. Back in the day, um, I obviously, I was a writer. I was a public a relations person, person. And when I went to college, in the back of my mind, it was like, um, you don't want to be in the creative arts because you don't make any money. You know, that was how I was, that was a limiting belief. Well, what I did when I went to school is I said, okay, well, I'm not going to have that be a problem because I'm going to do my creative writing, get my creative writing degree and business. So mm -hmm. I did a dual major of creative writing and business management. And then when I got the master's, it was mass communications and instructional technology because along the way I knew that I had to do that and your background Heather is so phenomenal because again like when you think about how many years that you spent uh, developing your your voice and now and you the words that you use I think it, that really hit me right in the heart was when you said your power voice Mm -hmm. um, when you said that, um, it was like, whoa, um, Heather Podeska can help me find my power voice. And it made me want to go, hey, man, I'm going to, I'll fly wherever Heather tells me to fly. Well, and I have to you tell know, you something, Tammy, because. It's so funny. I, but I believe that. I believe everybody has a power voice. And you, you know, we all know it. You, you don't need me to say it. You know it. You know that's in there because you live inside your your body, inside your head. You know that voice is in there. Everybody has that. And it's so amazing to see people unleash it and really get it out. So that's sort of, that's the joy of, of what I do. And I've seen – one of the things I wanted to say was um, a lot of the people who've done my master class are introverts. And – it's so important to talk about it because I think people think that only people who are performers are great speakers or should be speakers. But my adage is leaders speak and speakers lead. If you want to be a leader in your industry, you have to get your voice and your message out there. And one of the things that um, introverts don't always realize is that speaking to an audience can sometimes be easier than being the life of the party. Because if you go to a networking event, you have to talk to a lot of different people, make small talk. And for an introvert, that's like, Ish, you don't want to do that. It's absolutely draining. Yeah. But when you're speaking to an audience, first of all, you know exactly what you're going to say. You've rehearsed it. You only have to say it one time. And you're shooting like, you know, a hundred ducks with one bullet because you have that audience in front of you. You you don't have to prove anything because you're already established as the authority standing at the front of the room. So, and once you, and I know this is true, but once, I've seen it over and over, once you get that bug, once you start doing it, just like your experience, once you start having the confidence and that, that reinforcement of having the experience, it becomes really fun. So it's not about being the life of the party. It's about being the authority and standing in your own power. And have, that's where that power voice comes from. And what I do helps you like really pull it out and, and look and sound great too. But everybody has it. Mm -hmm. um, we have a mutual friend and I know that you coached her. Her name is Sharon Ada Pollock. Yes. I was... I was a witness to her presentation to 300 women and cool men where um, after she had been coached by you, she got on the stage and she did her presentation 
and she was able to have a call to action with her talk and she did her presentation and more than a third, if not nearly a half of the audience got up and ran to the back of the room wow. to get her product. She had a very compelling story about uh, radiation from t cell phones and she had an, a solution to the problem. But I just wanted to tell you that she was a really prime example of someone who took the coaching you gave her she she got up on the stage and she just radiated and she had that audience in the palm of her hand and they took action mm. immediate action and i just happened to be lucky enough to be there as a as a witness because sharonada had invited me to help her yeah because her vision was that there would be people lined up in the back of the room and, and it really came true. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, that I was there to, to witness that and, and I know that you had helped her to work on that and practice on that um, at an event that we were both attending. So that was really cool. So Heather, can you tell me where people can find out more about you and your services? Yeah, absolutely. It's super easy. It's just my name, heatherpoduska.com, P-O-D-U-S-K-A, is my website. I'm on Instagram. My handle is Heather Poduska. Twitter, it's Heather Poduska. <laughs> Facebook, it's Heather Poduska. It's, you know, it, I'm, I am myself. And, I mean, that's one of the tips if you want to really get known. Brand your name, you know, if you're a solopreneur. So make it easy for people to find you. And... The She Runs the World is a Facebook page, so if you go to She Runs the World, you can find out more about that tour and that tour of speaking and that event as well. That's that's not under my name. That's under She Runs the World. But otherwise, heatherpoduska.com. If you want to email me, you can email me. My email address is heather at clearvoicebranding.com. Super easy. Well, Heather, again, I really, really enjoyed talking with you, and I think we covered a lot and if anything, I think the big message is be persistent, mm -hmm. find somebody who can help you get where you want to go and ask yourself the questions, what do I really, really want and why do I want it? So thank you so much, Heather. Thank you so much for having me on, Tammy, and you are a diamond and I cannot wait to see you on the stage. This is Tammy Pantzer. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.